everybody. Happy Mother's Day and welcome to worship. Before we begin, I just want to remind everyone that the church council will meet on Wednesday, May 12th, and that's at 630 at the church in the church sanctuary. And the beginning part of our meeting will be a work meeting to start measuring um, seats and other preparation for when we are able to return back to our sanctuary. And also after that, we will have our business meeting where we will finalize, hopefully, a date for our return to the sanctuary. So keep your ears and eyes open because that information will be coming out soon. And now as we turn our minds and hearts to worship, let us consider these words. Come closer, draw near. God is calling us together and you are welcome. So come, let us praise God. The call to worship today is based on Psalm 98. The response is, praise the Lord, for God is good. Praise the Lord, for God is good. Sing a new song to the Lord. God has done wonderful things. Praise the Lord, for God is good. Sing for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Praise God with songs and shouts of joy. Praise the Lord, for God is good. Sing praises to the Lord. Play music on the harps. Praise the Lord, for God is good. Blow trumpets and horns and shout for joy to the Lord. Praise the Lord, for God is good. Roar, sea, and every creature in you. Sing, earth, and all who live on you. Praise the Lord, for God is good. Clap your hands, you rivers. You hills, sing together with joy before the Lord. Today we keep in our prayers John Johnson, Deb Kirsted, Beth Scarborough, Ingrid Witten, Carol Leslie, Kent Lawson, Floyd Bickle, Missy Chasen, and Sarah Piazza. Let us pray. In so many ways, you are the model of a perfect mother, compassionate, creative God. And so on this day set aside to celebrate mothers, we celebrate and we thank you. We thank you for your loving presence, your creative presence, your nurturing presence. We thank you for all the women in our lives who fill our lives with compassion and love, creativity and nurture. We thank you for mothers of all kinds, birth mothers, surrogate mothers, adoptive mothers and biological mothers, stepmothers and grandmothers. We thank you for mothers who are so good at what they do, and we pray your guidance for those who struggle with parenthood. We ask that you bring hope and comfort to women longing to become mothers, but struggling with issues of infertility. We thank you for the women in our lives who touch and change our lives in so many ways, even though they are not our mothers. We thank you for our friends and families, the leaders and the trailblazers, the dreamers and the achievers. We thank you for women everywhere and ask your blessing upon them. We pray today especially for women and girls who are oppressed because they are female, those who struggle with body image because of society's views on how a woman should look, those who fight for the rights of women everywhere. We pray for women and girls caught in sex trafficking and human trafficking. We pray for the millions of girls worldwide who are still not allowed to attend primary or secondary schools, keeping them from learning the skills they need 
to break cycles of poverty. We pray for girls who are victims of early or forced marriage and for victims of gender-based violence. We pray for all these women and girls around the world, O oh God. We pray for all who are victims of abuse and oppression, those who are ill and injured, those who have lost hope and joy. We ask that you bring justice where there is persecution, love where there is abuse, health and he healing where healing and health are needed. Bring hope where there is despair and joy where there is only sadness. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Here ends our reading. May God add to our understanding of it. May is usually a very busy time around Central Congregational Church. For a long time, May was the month that the Missions Committee focused on Heifer International, a group whose mission it is to create and support sustainable food sources for people around the world. I remember how excited I was when I first heard that the Missions Committee supported Heifer's efforts. As a Sunday school student, I helped raise money for what was then called the Heifer Project. And even as a child, I understood Heifer's concept of sustainability and teaching people to fish or take care of livestock rather than giving one person one fish, feeding them only for a day. For several years, I chose one Sunday in the month of May to talk about the work of Heifer International. Several years ago, God led Reverend Carol Leslie to our church. She introduced Mental Health Awareness Sunday. As you are hopefully aware, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, 
And I was thrilled when Carol brought up the idea of having a Mental Health Awareness Sunday. For the past six or seven years, Carol has offered a provocative sermon on various mental health related issues. And of course, the second Sunday of May, today, is Mother's Day. Traditionally, we present the women in the congregation with a small token of love and an appre an appreciation on this day. We also include women and women's issues specifically in the prayers on this day. And then some years, like this, Pentecost also falls in the month of May. So between mothers and heifers, the Holy Spirit and mental health, May sometimes proves to be quite a busy month. That is until COVID-19 hit. Last May, we were not yet meeting in person at all, and I was trying to make the most of our video worship services, but nothing quite felt right for any of these special days. This year, we're meeting in the church parking lot, and I'm still doing my best to create the worship videos. While the missions committee is not specifically collecting money for Heifer International this year, and we've put Mental Health Awareness Sunday on hold for just a bit longer, I still believe and maintain their importance and their significance. Of course, we still celebrate Mother's Day, and those of you who attend the drive-in worship service will receive a small gift to celebrate. And we will still celebrate Pentecost on May 23rd. But even still, I had all of these things in mind as I began to prepare our worship for today. And then I read our scripture lesson, and it just suddenly made sense. I think perhaps John Lennon summed up our scripture reading today best, saying, all you need is love. Supporting the work of organizations like Heifer International, all you need is love. Working to chip away the stigma that surrounds mental illness, all you need is love. Celebrating Mother's Day, all you need is love. Pentecost Sunday, all you need is love. It might seem a bit simplistic, however, love is anything but simple. That is, real, genuine love is anything but simple. Sure, it's easy to say, I love my neighbors, or I love my family. It's not quite as easy to actually love my neighbors or my family all the time, the way we are told to love each other. I'm sure we're all familiar with Paul's description of love that tells us that love is patient and kind, generous, humble, honorable, even tempered, forgiving, truthful, trusting, hopeful, and eternal. Those things are not always easy. Our scripture lesson for today supports all of those claims, but it also delves deeper into the importance and characteristics of love. The pas passage captures the words of Jesus shortly before his death. In a commentary, I found this, sum this summary that I thought was especially meaningful. The author writes, there's only one way to be really happy. We must remain in a close relationship with Jesus at all times. Jesus was joyful always because he was united with God. And Jesus knew that his father loved him completely. Jesus loved his disciples as much as his father loved him. And Jesus loves all his followers in this special way. We can know his wonderful love all the time if we remain in a close relationship with him. When we know Jesus' love daily, our happiness does not depend on our situation. It depends on him. He'll never leave us. He will always love us. Jesus loves us completely. When we know this, we want to love other people. 
Jesus loves us so much that he died to save us. He said that like him, we too should love other people. So we should do whatever we can in order to help other people. We do not always need to do great things in order to show our love. So, for example, that we might simply listen to other people. And that shows more love than if we always talk about ourselves. Or we might help other people even when we have our own problems. We might spend time with other people when we would prefer to do something else. Then the author concludes, or we might just do more things on behalf of other people than they would expect. In other words, all you need is love. It's as simple and as complicated as that. Our passage today calls us to love God, love ourselves, and love one another. Furthermore, it calls us to love with the kind of love that Jesus shared with his disciples, himself, and God. The passage tells us that when we are able to attain this kind of love, we find true and lasting joy. Our passage today reminds us that we are loved and therefore we are called to love. As we consider this unbroken circle of love given and received, I want to close by sharing a love letter with you. It's actually verses of scripture put together. The actual love letter belongs to Father Heart Communications. It reads, my child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I am familiar with all your ways. Even the hairs on your head are numbered. For you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being. For you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb. I brought you forth on the day you were born. I've been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, for I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope, because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are as countless as the sand on the seashore and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul, and I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart. For it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I'll take away all the pain that you have suffered on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you even as I love my Son, Jesus. 
For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I loved that I may gain your love. If you received the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me, and nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father and will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Love your dad, almighty God. As we go about our days this month, all we need is love. Whether it's finding ways to love others near and far by supporting organizations like Heifer International, or helping spread awareness about mental health, or celebrating the women, especially the mothers in our lives, or the work of the Holy Spirit, all we need is love. Let us pray. God of love, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who modeled for us the perfect love. Help us to love ourselves, love one another, and love you. Amen. And now let us go into the world knowing that whatever our doubts, God believes in us. God trusts us. God knows we will do great things in God's name. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from the other. Amen. Happy Mother's Day, everyone, and hope you have a great week. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank uh-huh. you.